All right, welcome to part eight from chapter 11. And in this episode, we're going to go over monohybrid crosses. And we're going to begin to learn how to do genetic story problems. This is kind of where the math comes involved. So this is started at the beginning of our Punnett squared time. But first, I want to talk about the first of one of Mendel's two laws. And this is called the law of segregation. And when it comes to segregation, all you need to remember is that segregation simply means separation. Get that spelled in here for you. And what it means is that the alleles will separate during meiosis. So as we can see down here in this picture, we have allele number one, and I'm just going to make this a big T. We have allele number two, and I'm going to make this one a little T. So this individual is, I mean, I'll fix that T there a little bit better. There we go, little T. Uh, this individual is heterozygous, and when it makes gametes, half of the gametes we get a big T, the other half we're going to get a little T. And we'll just make these sperm cells because the little tails are fun to draw. Okay, so we'll do it over here again. We've got an individual who's heterozygous. Uh, there's the dominant allele, there's the recessive allele. And we'll say when this lady makes egg cells, half of them are going to get a big A, and then the other half are going to get a little A. That's all there is to the law of segregation. And this is fundamental when it comes to doing Punnett square problems because it essentially tells you which letters to put on outside the Punnett square. <clears throat> all right, now, probability is essentially math. We're looking at the likelihood of how a certain event will occur. And the answers to probability questions are given in the terms of a ratio. So when you flip a coin, there's a one out of two chance that it'll be heads. And you can also write that with the colon, as I'm sure you're well aware of from your math class. One out of two chance that it could be, we'll say, tails this time. Okay? Now, you can also list these in percents. So, in other words, there's a 50% chance that a coin flip will come up heads. So these are all listing probabilities. What's the chance that something's going to happen? Now, when we do genetics problems, we're going to use a Punnett square. And this picture over here is a Punnett square. And this one's showing you the likelihood of having a boy or a girl. So what we have over here is uh, the mom up at the top. And we use the law of segregation because all human females have two X chromosomes. And so when she makes her egg cells... Half of them are going to get one X chromosome, and the other half are going to get the other X chromosome. So there's the two egg cells. And those are up here. So I'm going to put a circle around those. Okay? So let's put another color in here. Let's use blue. Whoops, that's the wrong one. Uh, let's try that again. What do we do here? There we go. Uh, let's try blue. Whoops, almost did it again. Okay? And then all guys who are humans, they're X and Y. They have an X chromosome, they have a Y chromosome. So when they make sperm cells, half of the sperm cells get an X, and half of the sperm cells get a Y. Okay, so normally we put the guy here on the side, so we'll, there's the sperm cells. And what we use here on the outside of the Punnett square, we use the law of segregation. Half the gametes get this allele, half the gametes get other allele. And now it's just plug and chug. So X, X, so if this egg cell and that sperm cell get together, you get X, X. If this sperm cell and that egg cell to get together, X, X. If this sperm cell and that egg cell, X and Y. And then obviously over here, X and Y. So what we can see here from this Punnett square, that the chances of becoming a guy is 50% or 1 out of 2. And the chances of becoming a girl are also 50% or 1 out of 2. Because 2 out of 4 reduces to 1 out of 2, okay? So basically, every one of these boxes is essentially 25%. So if two of these, 25 plus 25, there's your 50%. So that's how you do a basic, basic Punnett square. So look, let's look and see how this uh, works with Mendelian concepts of dominant and recessive. <clears throat> All right. What we're going to do here is, is called a one-factor cross. Now, what we mean by factor, we're talking about, uh, let's use this color here. We go with green again. One factor basically means one gene 
or basically one gene pair. Because remember, genes come in pair. Pairs because you got one from mom and you got one from dad. So we're looking at one gene pair or one set of alleles is basically what we're talking about. <clears throat> okay, so only one trait is studied. For example, height or flower color or whatever, and that's going to be controlled by that one gene pair. Now, the first set of parents, which are called the P1 generation, but often you're going to see it just referred to as just P. Uh, you just kind of assume that there's a one here. So the first set of parents are true breeding or purebreds. Remember, those two things mean the same. And remember, when you see the word true breeding and purebred, that means homozygous. Okay? And now these are different. So remember, one parent is going to be homozygous dominant, and the other parent is going to be homozygous recessive. See? Different genotypes, different phenotypes. Okay? The first generation of offspring are called the F1 generation. And the F stands for filial, which in Latin means the word son. I kind of remember it this way. F, F. There's two Fs in offspring, so this is the first set of offspring. Now, all of these guys are going to be hybrids. Now, remember, hybrid means heterozygous. So when they're heterozygous, they always show the dominant phenotype, okay? So let's review this once, once again. A one-factor cross looks in only one trait. So we're looking at one pair of letters. Uh, the first set of parents, the P1 generation, there are two different purebreds. So one's homozygous dominant, the other one's homozygous recessive. And then when they have babies, they're all going to be hybrids. All right, so let's show you a picture, show us how that all comes together. All right, so what we have here is we have a homozygous dominant um, homozygous dominant tall and a homozygous dominant recessive. So just to help you remember here, tall, and then that one's going to be short. So those are two different purebreds. And you notice right here, they did not put the P1 generation. It's kind of assumed. I like to put it there just for myself, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, so we do the law of segregation. Some of the egg cells get a big T. The other big or other egg cells get the other big T. The little T's over here. Some sperm cells get one little T. The other sperm cells get the other little T. And now it's just plug and chug. And you'll notice that all of the... <laughs> see what I put up here? We're going to fix this. We'll make those females. And we'll cross this out here. That's kind of funny, actually. Okay? We'll just fix that. Now, notice everything on the inside represents all the babies. So let's do this. We'll put down offspring inside. Now, this is possible offspring, okay? You know, they may only have one baby, but this is just telling you the percentage chances. Now, in this case, 100% of the babies are going to be heterozygous. And therefore, and that's genotype, and phenotypically, they're all going to be 100% tall, okay? And what set of offspring are these inside here? This is the first set of offspring. In other words, they're the F1 generation. All right, now, what Mendel would do next with his F1s is he would make them the parents, okay? So he would take the F1 generation and he would turn them into the second set of parents. And those would be the P2. So you always see a P2 on this one, okay? Now, when you made this cross of the F1s, your phenotype ratio, remember ratio, we're talking uh, use a colon, you could use fractions, and you could use percentages. You come out with a three to one phenotype ratio. Remember, phenotype is basically what you look like, get that right in here, whoops, what you look like, there we go, got that right, okay, so three out of four would show the dominant phenotype, and only one out of four would show the recessive, so if you want to put this in percentages, 75% would be dominant, 25% would be recessive, okay, now the genotype, and remember we talk about genes, 
We're talking about the alleles. So you would use words like homozygous, uh, heterozygous, re dominant recessive. You could use just the letters, big T, big T, big T, little T, that kind of stuff. Your genotype ratio would be 1 to 2 to 1. One would be homozygous dominant, two of them would be heterozygous, and one would be homozygous recessive. Put this in percentages, that would be 25% would be homozygous dominant, 50% of them would be heterozygous, and 25% would be homozygous recessive. Okay. Now, see your three to one? This one right there and that one right there, there's your 75% because both of these would show the dominant phenotype. All right, let's get rid of that, and we'll show you a picture. All right, now in this one, we're using um, color in mice, and what we have here, uh, let's, let's use uh, purple. Okay, so the big B equals black, so this, would, this is the allele for black fur, and then a little b, which is recessive, would be white fur, okay? So what we have here, is a heterozygous mouse and is going to be crossed with another heterozygous mouse. So our F1s in this case, they all were hybrids. So our cross is this, big B, little b, there's a cross. What this cross here means, it simply means mate. You're going to mate these two together. And doing the log segregation, egg cells, egg cells, sperm cells, and sperm cells. So now it's just plug and chug, big B, big B, heterozygous, heterozygous, homozygous, recessive, and they've written in the phenotypes for you. Heterozygous are black, homozygous dominant are black, and the only way you can be white is two little Bs. And here's your famous ratios, three black to one uh, white. So that would be, remember, 75%, whoops, to 25%. And then your, your genotype ratio, uh, one of them is big B, big B, two of them are big B, little b, and one of them is little b, little b, okay? So a couple things you want to remember as we go over a little review on this is your P1s were always different purebreds, and remember purebreds means homozygous dominant. When that happens, your F1 generation, those are all hybrids. Hybrids means heterozygous. Your P2 were always a hybrid crossed with a hybrid because you're just using your F1s as your next set of parents. And then in your F2 generation, which all of these guys in here, that's your second set of offspring they will give you a three to one, uh, that's a phenotype ratio, and it'll always give you a one to two to one genotype ratio. Okay, so as we go through this, this uh, chapter, you wanna be able to recognize these scenarios uh, because when we have a certain case of heterozygous on the outside, heterozygous on the outside, in other words, heterozygous cross with another heterozygous, you are always going to get these ratios. So we're going to learn three famous ratios under Mendelian genetics, and we got two of them right here. The 3 to 1 uh, phenotype ratio, the 1 to 2 to 1 genotype ratio, and in our next set of, uh, our next episode, we're going to learn the third famous ratio, which is 9 to 3 to 3 to 1. Okay, now this is a very important episode. This is also one that you want to review. And in fact, we're right in the middle of a three, uh, the three parts that are most important in this, this episode. Episode 7, over Mon Mendelian vocabulary. Uh, this one, which is part 8, the monohybrid cross. And then part 9, which will be next, on the dihybrid cross. So make sure you watch these three more than once before we uh, have any tests or quizzes. Okay? So until the next episode, we're going to catch you on the flip side. Even though I thought this episode was over, I forgot to do this slide. So we're going to add this in here right now, okay? As you can see here on this picture, we've got pea plants, and we're dealing with tall and short. And this is just a, another graphic example to show you how Mendel did his monohybrid crosses. So let's remember, when we hear the word mono, 
think of one. And hybrid deals with trait. So we're looking at only one trait. So we're only looking at two letters, okay? And these are typically dominant and recessive. And I also want you to remember that tall is dominant and short is recessive, okay? So here we've got our first set of parents. And remember, the first set of parents are two different purebreds. So this guy right here would be big T, big T. And its mate is going to be two little t's, okay? So the phenotype is tall, phenotype is short, okay? So if you did your Punnett square, draw that right in here. Uh, little t, little t, big t, big t. Uh, every box is going to have big t, little t, okay? So all the F1s are going to be hybrids. And remember, hybrids means uh, heterozygous. And remember, when you're a hybrid, in this case, or heterozygous, you're going to show the dominant phenotype, so you're going to be tall. Okay? So we're going to let these guys mate, and your Punnett square is going to look like this. Okay, big T, little t, big T, little t, two big T's, heterozygous, heterozygous, homozygous recessive, and that represents these down here. So this individual here is the homozygous dominant one. These two individuals will be heterozygous. They represent this box and that box, and here's your short one right there. So your genotype ratio in your F2, your second set of offspring, would be 1 to 2 to 1, okay? One is homozygous dominant, two are heterozygous, one is homozygous recessive. Phenotypically, the ratio would be three tall to one short. Okay, now this episode is over. So I can officially say, until the next episode, we're going to catch you on the flip side.